Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to the Krista Chronicles and today we are getting on a new tag put out by Logan from Larkin Legend. I loved watching their video of this. Logan is so funny. If you somehow aren't watching Logan yet, highly recommend. I always just giggle and kick my feet all the way through. <laughs> Their videos they're just incredible anyways first of all I have to show look how pretty these are my zinnias I brought in yesterday they're gonna be here with our our video these two are my favorite so maybe let's face it that way they won't be very in focus but that's okay okay so maiden mother crone decks of course I will link Logan's video below but the premise here that Logan laid out is they picked three decks for each of the three categories. So three decks that gave off maiden energy to them, three decks for mother, three decks for crone. So it's just decks that you feel embody that kind of energy. I thought it just was such a fun new categorization for me. So yeah, let's get into it. And I will say, Logan didn't necessarily stick with tarot or oracle, but I am sticking with tarot because I think it just would have been too hard for me to pick. But I might do this again with Oracle. I think that'd be really fun to see. So these are gonna be all tarot decks today, but let me know if you wanna see an Oracle version. I think that'd be really fun. Anyways, let's get into it with our, the Maiden decks. So these decks I was looking at, I picked them based on the fact that to me, they kind of give this feeling of youthfulness, and I mean that in the way of not necessarily being like age specific, but more just kind of the energy that they give off to me feels very youthful and fresh. And it's, when I think about maiden energy, energy to me, there's this kind of like, Almost, I don't want to say extreme hopefulness, but just like this real like sunny way of looking at things. Hope in that way. And just kind of a sweetness, which is a word definitely that Logan used. Sweetness. I thought that was a great word. So I think let's just get right into it. My first maiden deck I have to show today is the Woodland Fairy Tale Tarot. Now, of course, fairy tales, right away that gives a youthful energy, but for me it was also the art style of this deck. And I think the distinction I'm trying to make is I'm not trying to say childish, although I don't know, I feel like it's strange to me to that childish is used in a negative context sometimes as well. Um, I more mean childlike and youthful, not childish in a like uh, derogatory sense. Der it, I don't feel like that fits their derogatory. I mean, like a negative sense. <laughs> but this deck, I feel like, just visually brings me right back to the books I liked to, liked to read as a kid, the shows I liked to watch, the computer games I liked to play. So it almost reminds me, I guess, of my own state of maidenhood, which I suppose I'm still am in. It's so interesting because Maidenhood spans such a an expanse of time. And like Logan mentioned, we go through constant cycles of that. So anyway, but it has that youthful energy to me. But then also I think the tone of voice this deck has going through the guidebook, which totally recommend it gives kind of a line at the bottom of each card, which is really what stood out to me when I first went through this deck, that kind of gives you almost like the main gist of what the rest of the entry is going for, but it gives this like real quick piece of advice. And to me, it feels like when it's, it's talking to me through the guidebook, that it's giving me It's giving me advice almost as, mm, 
as if we're peers. Gosh, I knew. <laughs> I was so excited about this tag. I picked out my decks right away. But it took me a few days to film it because I'm like, I know I'm not going to get any words out right about this. <laughs> um, how do I want to explain that? It feels like we're peers. In that, the, the feeling I get when I'm using this deck is like, we are both at the beginning of some kind of journey. And they're like the pal that's along with me. Giving me advice as this journey gets going. And it just feels hopeful in that way. And like, I don't know, the idea of drawing on these stories, but these very specific fairy tales, feels like, I don't know, it's like I could almost sense this idea of like a children's TV show where it goes through. Oh my gosh, there was a show like this on. I don't know if it was PBS or HBO. I think it was HBO. Where it would go through the fairy tale and really point out the lesson that was learned. I can't think of what that show was called, but if you know, definitely let me know. But this, it just totally, this was the first one that came to mind with this maiden energy because it just has this youthful, hopeful feeling it has these really nice messages, not too sweet, but just like, again, it feels like we're talking as friends, like we're on an even playing field almost. That's what it feels like. So my first maiden deck is the Woodland Fairy Tale Tarot. Next up, if I could get this back in this box, great, is Taking that maiden energy in a bit of a different direction. The Sheeple Tarot. This to me is a bit more like... Mm, it feels to me like maiden energy, but later maiden energy, where it's sort of like... It's definitely got more of that kind of obviously nudity warning, like sexual kind of energy. This deck feels very kind of fiery wands suit to me. But it also feels like a deck that offers a lot of exploration and exploration of self and identity and how you see yourself. And I think that just to me really fits into that maiden energy well, because to me, that maiden energy is like being in this position of a lot of things being new, not really maybe knowing totally what's going on, what direction you're going, and perhaps who you really are in that moment. And this is a great deck to me for exploring topics like that. It's really, like, you know, obviously you can, I mean, most of us use every single tarot deck <laughs> for self-reflection, but this is always the one I think of when it's kind of about identity, how you view yourself in the world, empowerment, which I think is an important part of maidenhood. So this really felt like a maiden deck to me, which was, it was interesting to see the two different ways my thoughts went. Because this was the one, probably not surprising, this topic was the easiest for me to pick from and almost difficult because it was like, oh, I feel like I have so many. Because I tend to really like that kind of energy. But, okay, that's my second maiden deck, She Wolf. And last but not least in this category, we're kind of going a little bit back to the first one. It is. The Unicorn's Journey Tarot. This one also just instantly came to mind. I think it's the perfect maiden deck. And I think something too to highlight is, because I almost didn't put this in here because the 
in the guidebook for the unicorn's journey, you get for every card you get self worth advice, self worth message. You get a self worth message, which is such a highlight of this deck for me. And so I almost didn't put it here because I was like, well, gosh, it's giving like such wisdom though. But I chose to put it in here anyway, because overall the energy of it feels very maiden to me. And I think it's something to say that just because someone is in either a maiden era of life age-wise or just that's the cycle they're in currently doesn't mean that they don't have wisdom to offer. To me it's like when I'm using this deck it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm getting advice like uh that kind of like crone energy advice where they've <clears throat> kind of lived a complete life and so it's like teaching you the lessons they had to learn the hard way kind of thing that's not really the energy that this feels like to me this feels like with that self-worth advice it feels like to me the deck is sharing these things based on this kind of like freshness it experiences it almost makes me feel like I'm trying to get my words out right. <laughs> I don't want to say someone who hasn't experienced these things. That's not at all what I mean. It's it's sort of like... It feels like someone who is also maybe in a maiden phase. Again, it feels more like peer advice. But who just kind of like inherently can offer these things. It makes me think of how... Okay, we're going to go on a little thought journey here. Um, I read a lot of parenting books because I'm a children's librarian, so I have to, <laughs> you know, I just, it, one, it, it doesn't interest me, I think it's fascinating, but also I have to give recommendations, so I kind of read a little bit of everything I've got in my section, and that's one of those things. And something that comes up kind of time and again is how when someone is usually, again, I, like, not obviously across the board, but usually when someone is going into parenting, with good intentions, I guess that's what we'll say, they take the things that about how they were raised that they didn't like or just they didn't feel were favorable and usually when they go into raising their own children they really go in the opposite direction from those things. And it's sort of like this, like how it's like healing these generational things. And so it kind of reminds me how like if that's the case, if that's like it is this line of like good intentioned parenting in that way how consistently it's like the next generation doesn't have to experience these certain things they just know it's not right you know it's like they get to it's i don't know I hope, does anyone know what I'm saying? how it's like with, with each generation it feels like there is some sort of big thing that they can grow up inherently knowing is not right, knowing it's wrong. And that's what this deck feels like to me. It feels like it's coming from that space of this more like something's been healed. Just, I don't know if that makes any sense. Gosh, now we're rambling. But I just, it gives off such maiden energy to me in that very specific way. That's hard to put in words, but gosh, what a favorite. Unicorn's Journey Tarot. All right, let's get out the mother decks. All right, next we've got our mother decks, which <laughs> this one cracks me up because from the first time Logan started talking about this category immediately, Call Me Mother by RuPaul started playing in my head and it just cracks me up. Um, anyway, <laughs> so with these decks, I was really looking for that Empress energy where it's offering guidance in this kind of this very nurturing bringing you in kind of way and I feel like that's the best way I have to describe it so I should just stop there <laughs> first up we've got herb crafters which when I thought about this deck initially I first 
thought to put it into the crone category and I feel like that might be a place a lot of people put it but when I started to think about it a bit more it just it wasn't feeling right in that and I think hmm oh gosh this video is gonna be so much of like how do I want to say this <laughs> It almost feels like this deck is a bit too active for me to be a crone deck. Not to say that in cronehood, like, you lose activity. That's not what I'm trying to say. But there is still somewhat of a youthfulness, it feels like, to this deck. And I should say, too, how Logan described it was kind of where, like, Maidenhood's planting the seed and motherhood is is really watching the seeds grow and develop and so thinking about it that way I was like no this is definitely a mother deck and thinking about when I use it that's I don't go for it for that grandmother energy to me it does feel like that mothering empress kind of energy it feels like when, you, when I use this deck, it almost feels like there is some kind of mother figure bringing me in, showing me around their garden, and it's like like teaching me the ways that I want to get a witch hazel to, uh, bush so bad. And I might. Anyways, showing me the different ways that the things in their garden and in the natural world are used. And so it really, to me, gives off mother energy in that way. And I think, too, it's like, with the mother energy, it's, it's you know, that's, it's this thing of, like, creating life in some way, bringing life to something in some way. And there's so much life going on in this deck, and that's entirely what it's about. It's about growing and utilizing all the plants in here. Isn't it so pretty? It's so pretty. So that is my first mother deck, the Herb Crafters Tarot. All right, next up, I feel like this is an obvious one, at least to me, the Gentle Tarot. I mean, what a quintessential, I can't say the word quintessential anymore without thinking of um, the guy on TikTok who calls his wife Pookie. <laughs> he uses that word all the time, which I love it. I think it's great. But now I can't say it without thinking of Pookie. Anyway, what, like this, this deck to me screamed mother energy. This was an easy pick. It feels like it is bringing you into that kind of mothering hug where it's like, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, but I'm so sorry that's happening. You know what I mean? Like it does care about your feelings, even if it's telling you the truth. And something about the colors and the way the illustrations are drawn, again, still it maintains that kind of bit of youthfulness that there's so much life going on in these cards and the whole theming of it feels like a mother figure passing on wisdom to a child figure. Again, so pretty. Something about the mother decks, I was like, I need them. They just had to be colorful. That just makes sense to me. And they really all ended up being that way. But this really just gives off that energy so well. So good. So that's my second mother deck. That is the Gentle Tarot. And last but not least, the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. And again, 
like I could see someone picking this for crone energy, but I think, I don't know, it's a bit, it still has like such life and such active growth in it to me that it just felt so much more like a mother energy deck. And there is this softness and gentleness to it that at least when I'm viewing those three energies that I find when I think about them to me the mother energy feels a bit softer where the crone energy has some sass and this one definitely has more of that softness and gentleness to it within the wisdom it has to give and again it feels like it's in this space of active growth, active harvesting. And I think that's all I gotta say. Just felt, felt like mother energy to me. So that is my last mother deck. The, did I say? Yes, Dreams of Gaia Tarot. Okay, last but not least, we've got our crone energy decks. And interestingly, two of them have a very similar flavor. So let's start with the one that doesn't. And that is, I still have to make a tie. <laughs> There's so many bags I have to make a tie for sometimes. I don't know why, that's just, I just don't. But it is the Shining Tribe Tarot by Rachel Pollock. And I think a lot of my reasoning has to do with just Rachel Pollock as a person, but I feel like just the way the artwork is done here. It does also lend itself to me, to crone energy. It just has this antiquitous feel. Is that a word? Antiquitous? I don't know. I think it is. But it's, we've got a huge guidebook that comes with it, of course, written by Rachel Pollock. And I think just her as a person had such a crone energy to me. Like anything I, have ever read by her and still am like you know through this deck working with just feels like she was wise beyond anything I've ever experienced like it just felt like she knew things <laughs> not to be so weird about that but I don't know if anyone else has read any of her books doesn't it just feel that way it's like that she just is keyed into some kind of wisdom and knowledge that not many other people would. And just the way she sees the world is so interesting and again really full of this wisdom in a kind of a crone way where it's, I think to me, the mother decks really focus on nurturing and growth of the self where crone energy energy to me and especially looking at the decks I picked out it's seeing something in the bigger picture it's like how all the puzzle pieces fit together in your whole world not just about you and this deck does that so perfectly and I really love it for that so good so that is the shining tribe tarot now the next two happen to both be fairy decks, and fairy decks to me often have that crone energy because I think they just, there's that little bit of sass, little bit of like mischievousness in there that I feel crone energy can definitely have. So first up we've got the fairy tarot. Now am I going to be able to put this into words? I don't know. But something about it, again, whenever I read with this deck, it doesn't feel like it's, it certainly is not any sort of hug deck. This one is not here to comfort me. It is here to tell me how it is. It does so in a bit of a unique way because it definitely follows more of a numerological lean. So in that sense, it 
it feels very uh, like a like practical. There's a practicality to the way this deck reads and a straightforwardness. And it feels like the combination of that with these very colorful, I don't know, it, it, something about these images feel, even though they aren't old, they feel old, like they could be in old storybooks. It feels a bit more fairies in a folkloric way, which to me just inherently has crone energy. Like when you get the the scary kind of fairies, you know, not just the cute ones. And I love I love folklore and folklore to me also just it has it feels kind of like the storytelling tradition where you have elders who pass on these stories that teach life lessons. That's what this deck feels like to me. So that is the fairy tarot. And last but not least, another fairy one. The tarot of the she feels very much so prone energy to me. And I think because again, It's fairies, but it feels more in a folklore kind of way versus maybe fairy tale kind of way. But also the guidebook, at least for the minors. What about the majors? Mm. So the minors are written in kind of poem form. The majors are still coming directly the, the guidebook entry is written as if it is coming right from the fairy on the card, but a bit more like a story form. But regardless, I just love the idea that none of the, the answers are straightforward. You have to either read that entry or that poem and decipher it a little bit. And to me, that feels so crone energy of, I'm not just going to hand this to you on a platter. <laughs> you got to do some thinking. You have to interpret for yourself and see what that means for you. That feels just so wise because so many of these things can be taken in different ways, depending on the person. And it just feels like there's a little bit of mischievous mischievousness in doing things that way. Almost like a, well, why should I? just give you the answer. You have to learn it too. Where I feel like that mother energy is a bit there to kind of give you the answers and help you in that way. Crone energy to me has more of the vibe of like, I'm going to give you this cryptic wisdom and you'll eventually learn what that means, but you got to learn it yourself. And this deck has that energy to a T for me. So, definitely crone energy. And that's my last one I have to show. That is the Tarot of the She. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was so much fun to think about and do. And again, I will link Logan's video below because it was so much fun to watch. And yeah, let me know if you want me to do an Oracle version. I think that'd be fun. But other than that, that's all I got for you today. So, I hope you're having a great day so far. And I'll see you again very soon.